Welcome back. In the previous step, we created a person JDBC DAO and we defined a simple find all method in here. We are using the JDBC template to fire a query against the database and we use the bean property row mapper to map the person class for it. That's cool. Now, we would want to be able to fire this at the startup of the application. So, what we'll do is in the database demo application, we'll implement a command line runner. So command line runner is one of the interfaces which is present in Spring Boot. This would be launching up. When I implement a command line runner, then this code which we write in a specific method, that would be launched up as soon as the application context is ready. So when the Spring application context launches up, the code in the command line runner gets executed. So let's do that. So I'm implementing command line runner, I'm importing it in. You can see that it's an org spring framework dot boot. So it's present in the spring boot framework. And now I would say add unimplemented methods. So I just went here, press control one, and it would add the methods in command line runner, which are not implemented. So if you go to the command line runner, you'd see that there is only one method which is present in here, run. So I would need to implement that in here. So I'd go ahead and implement it right now. And over here, what I would want to do is to write fire a query. How do I fire a query? What do I need to use to talk to the database? We use the person JDBC DAO. So person JDBC DAO. And this would be a DAO. And who would get this for us? Spring would get it for us and auto wire it in. So I'll say at auto wired import, please change to that. That's cool. And now, I can use the DAO to fire a query. So DAO.find all. This will return the list of values back. So I would want to print that to the console. I would need a logger. So let's define a logger. Private logger, logger is equal to logger factory dot, oops, factory dot get logger for this specific class. And that's, let's organize the imports. I would want to use the SLF for J1. And now I can say logger.info, I'll de log this at info level. And I would say all users and oops, I would want to print the value in here of the DAO.findAll. What does the logger do? It takes this value and replaces the first occurrence of this variable template. So let's format the code a little bit, stop and start the application. Let's see what would happen. I would expect an exception to be thrown. Or is it so? Let's find out. Okay, there is a exception that is being thrown. And if you look at it, it says no such method exception. And it says person dot init empty. So actually, whenever I'm using a bean row mapper, so what we are using in the JDBC is a bean property row mapper. And whenever I use a bean property row mapper, the bean on which the bean property row mapper is defined should have a no argument constructor. So I need to create a simple no argument constructor. One of the things is this is the default one which is provided by Java. So if this constructor was not there, this is provided by default. So I don't need to provide this at all. But since we provided this constructor, Java would no longer provide the default no argument constructor. So I need to provide that right now. So I'm just initializing a default no argument constructor and restart the application again. Actually, start the application because last time the start failed. Let's see what would happen now. The application started up and when I look at whatever is printed, it says all users and it's printing the person hash code stuff. So there are three persons printed, but it's printing the hash codes of it. How can I avoid that? I'd want to see the real values of person. I hate the hash code stuff. How do I do that? All that I need to do is generate the two string. So again, right click source, generate two string, generate two string. And I would want to include all the fields. That's fine. Go ahead and do that, please. So this would generate a person, but each person I would want to actually print it in a new line. So I'll say slash n. This would make sure that the details are printed on a new line and it's easily more visible in the log. Now let's stop and restart the application. Okay, this is the reason I had a slash in because I don't need to scroll anymore. So all the new persons are printed on new line. 
So you can see all the details that are populated for the person. You can see that the data is retrieved from the database. I'm able to see the data which is present in here. So in this step, what we have done is we were able to use the find all method inside our DAO to query for all the persons. And we printed the values that we loaded in for person in the log. That's cool. That's your first JDBC stuff working. So what we did in this example is we used Spring JDBC to execute a query and print the results of that query. We'll do a lot more in the subsequent steps. Until then, bye-bye.